Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak free. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. Hanoi, Vietnam. A beautiful landscape with a lot of history. Holding strongly on a tradition while acknowledging the inevitable changes of time. It's had and dealt out more than its fair share of pain and turmoil. But as always, it maintains a character all its own. Vietnam is one of my favorite places on Earth. The atmosphere, the people, the food. I came back to visit Lynn, who was my translator last time around. We became good friends. Lynn has invited me to his family's home to celebrate Tet, the Lunar New Year, the most important time of the year in Vietnam. I couldn't have come at a better time. So I just got out of Hanoi last evening. Went right to the hotel, crashed, woke up, arrived right middle of Tet, you know, the Lunar New Year. I came here to see the pagoda and everybody uh, burning jaw sticks, making offerings. And then I saw this place and thought, oh, this is just the kind of place I like. How about some snail soup for breakfast? Gotta have some of this. So I know there's snails involved. I know it looks really, really good. You got your big snails. You got your little snails. In the middle there, you got some crab meat usual sprouts, some pickled chilies, and a little garlic. And of course, what is it all about at the end of the day? And you find again and again and again a really terrific stock. Oh, yes. And look at the colors here. And you just pop right out. It's a, it's a gray day in Hanoi, and, look, and yet look at this color. This is great. You know, I would say that the food is particularly good because it's a day of celebration, but food is always good here. I have to tell you, I am so excited to be back here. You know, you meet the girl of your dreams in high school and she just smells right, you know, it's true love forever. That same kind of a immediate sense of recognition when I arrived in this country. I've been dreaming about coming to Hanoi for a long time. So cool that Lin's invited me to his house for Tet. Damn, it is good to be alive in Vietnam. Throughout Tet, the Vietnamese visit pagodas to make offerings and pray for their families and ancestors. And Lin is no exception. This is a place for the people to rearrange as a sacrifice before bringing into the temple. Offerings include young rice cakes, fruit, and incense. All the offerings are placed at the altar. When the incense is burned out, you're free to take back your offerings. They've been blessed and are supposed to provide happiness for the new year. Offerings complete, Lynn and I meet for food. This is why we get along so well, common ground. We both appreciate good food. Oh yeah. I mean, look at this place. Food everywhere. It's made from rice, sticky rice, very sticky. And it's not about parking yourself at a table for the day, but grabbing a bite and then trying what the next guy's got to offer. It's everywhere. The Tet holiday is when indulging in food hits a fever pitch in Vietnam. Everyone's been fasting, and now they're back to their favorite dishes with a vengeance. I tell you, if you're a foodie and you come to this country, you will just, you, you, you'll just go absolutely insane. Yeah, I used to have these as a kid, and the same thing happened to them. They ended up floating at the top. This is traditional medicine, right? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. What are those? 
Here's something different, corn pancakes. Not too difficult, right? Throw in a pile of corn, a little flour, cook in oil till crisp, and on the rack to dry. Like everything, delicious. You'll notice an essential difference here between here and, and, and similar operations in America. When you walk past these food stalls, every proprietor is absolutely beaming with pride at you. They got a big smile on their face, like, come on in, try this, it's the best. It's not that, yeah, what do you want? You know, you want the fries or the onion rings. You, you don't get that here. And you know it's good. You can tell from the expression of the proprietor that they're selling something really, really tasty and they know it. Uh -huh. Take, for example, quail eggs. And a thing for quail eggs. Just peel them. It's not the umbrella. Uh, a little bit of salt, ready to eat. Mm. Oh, delicious. Just keep it rolling, keep it coming. Please. So I know Lynn's family has a big Tet feast plan. But I saw something else in the market that I couldn't resist. Shrimp cakes. I think just one, one. This is a pretty straightforward operation. You got shrimp, you batter them, cook them in oil, a quick snip, and you're ready to go. Now, for those of you who scoff at the decor, I dare you, dare you to find a more scenic view. These are freshwater shrimp. Yes, freshwater. Crispy, airy, shrimpy, and delicious. Mm. Cannot beer. Yeah. But the bottom ones, not the uh, bubble uh -huh. one. Right. <laughs> bottom, not bubble. <laughs> Good to see you again. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. How do you say in uh, Vietnamese cheers? Chúc mừng. Chúc mừng. I really love this guy. And I can't wait to meet his family. As the celebration of Tet continues, the streets are abuzz with activity. Everyone's dressed up for the holiday, on their way to visit family, bearing food, offerings, gifts. The Vietnamese look upon guests during Tet as very auspicious. I'm glad I brought my suit. I don't want to look like a slacker in front of the family. Uh, this is my uh, grandfather's, uh, my uh, father's law house. Okay, meeting the family. I haven't been this nervous since I met my own in-laws. Hello. Oh, thank you. And my father. <laughs> what are you crafting? Well, nothing soothes the old nerves like a little Hanoi vodka. All roads lead to intoxication on this shit, don't they? Do, do I have, is there something about me, some quality that urges people to make me very drunk? Uh, the Vietnamese uh, rice wine. Oh, good. Uh, you, you know this. We, we call it the uh, fresh bile, extracted from the uh, bear. Bear bile. OK. Not politically correct. Dilemma time. Really. But I'm a good guest, or I try to be. Oh, I'm very excited at this, uh, at this prospect. Just in case I have any reservations, Lynn reads the list of benefits that the drink will provide for me. Digestive system, mm -hmm. by wind. That's a frequent problem wind. on this show. Yeah. Cheers. The best, best. Okay. Good. Yeah. And unsurprisingly, actions unfold with a familiar logic. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, okay, maybe I don't have the Vietnamese calendar quite figured out yet. But by my calendar, we celebrated about four New Years already. So, oh, here we go. Oh, the reinforcements. So while we're busy laying the foundation for a night of festivity, Lynn's sisters, wife, and mother-in-law are in the kitchen preparing the meal. All right, I know it doesn't seem fair, but seriously, would you want a bunch of guys gargling with bear bile cooking your tet meal? <laughs> As in most Vietnamese kitchens, there's a keen reliance on simple ingredients. But the key is how different flavors and colors and textures work together. And of course, presentation is important. This square cake is ban chong, made of glutinous rice, fatty pork, bean paste, wrapped in dong leaves, and tied off with bamboo twine. It steams for over 12 hours, and it's a must-have during Tet at Hanoi. Um, this is the uh, chung cake, we call it bánh chung. And this is very traditional, the one with the bean and the pork. Bean and pork. It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, bean and pork, I prefer. Yeah, me too. 
Tradition extends through most of these dishes. It's an astonishing spread. And again, every table seems to naturally end up having this incredible color contrast. As Lynn has sensibly pointed out, get those beauty shots now, because we're about to do some serious damage to this. <laughs> I think you try something, some of this first, and first. then you try this later. OK. This is the color of the rice during the Tet holiday in Vietnam. The rice is colored by the orange fruit it's cooked with. Though each dish may work fine on its own, most are meant to be used in combinations where different tastes and textures complement each other. Like the spring roll with the ubiquitous dipping sauce, Nguoc Nam. Mm. This is the uh, young bamboo shoot cooked with the pork. Yeah. I, I just pulled a piece of bamboo shoot out. People started to jump up, make sure I got a little green onion with it and broth. It's not about a single thing. Sweet goes with sour, opposing colors, opposing flavors, and I like that. Oh, good. Principles in action. And clearly, yeah. you absolutely have to have this yeah. with this. Yes, yeah, sure. Sour pickled onions with savory ban cha. Actually, it resonates with the classic garnish for, for French pate. You're getting the same kind of savory, sweet, sour thing going on. And I like that. This is an innate sense of what's good. There's a definite sense of past culinary influence. Stir fried frog legs. Uh, a galantine, a galantine of pork. It's pate like. Um, the liver and the heart of the pig fried together with the onion and carrot. Mm. It's good. Like holidays in the States, this food, mm. this meal, reflects personal associations and long traditions. This is the uh, young rice cake. I went to the pagoda. I left it on the altar as a sacrifice. Now I can enjoy it. It's not only the cake, but I'm now having the happiness and uh, whatever I wish for the whole year. I wish that for you also. Yeah, for you too. Even in English, it is impossible for me to, to describe how, how grateful and honored I am to be here. There's a link, a bond between life, family, and food in this country. And I cherish the moments I have here. The celebration of Tet has come to an end in Hanoi after which the first visitors and the first meal are regarded with great importance. So I better make a good impression on somebody, because I need some food. Luckily, Lin has arranged for a visit to the home of Madame Thuyet, one of the most renowned cooks in Vietnam. Well, the best, right? I mean, she, uh, she's won how many gold medals? A couple of gold medals? Yeah, she's not only good, but also the best. That's promising. Madame Thuyet lives in Hanoi's old quarter, in a typically tall, narrow, three-story building. She works out of her open-to-the-street top-floor kitchen, making her own highly personal version of takeout. <laughs> Through a low passageway, up some back stairs, minimal signage, but that's okay. Madame Thuyet knows that people who really love food will find her. <laughs> I meet Madame Thuyet's family. Her sister and two daughters help out in the kitchen. A family operation, so quality control is not a problem. This is gonna be a good meal. I can tell already. There's a vibe, there's a sense I'm gonna eat well. And here it is. This is what we came for, her famous chicken which is splayed out on a pan, slow roasted and glazed periodically with a brown sugar and wild honey mix. Customers have been known to line up down the street for this stuff. Yeah, this is one of those smells real good in this room situations. But there's also something else, snakehead fish. Excellent. There are several types of snakehead fish all uh, through the country, from right. the north to the south. The but she prefers the, the stuff of the north and should be caught from the nature, not the raised one. Right, farm. The same rules apply in the States. The, the wild is always better than the farm raised. The fish is sliced, 
dipped and rolled around a stuffing made of pork and mushrooms. If you take out a piece of a fillet of fish and you put something, a filling in the center and roll it like this, you could would call it a poquette. So this would be a poquette de poisson avec pork et champignon, actually, something like that. The rolled fish is dunked in a cornstarch batter and popped in a hot oil. Head and spine follow. Now, snakehead fish are a problem in the U.S. because they can actually crawl on land and kill larger animals. So it hasn't quite made the leap from nuisance to being on the dinner plate yet. Since all good cooks know that too much of a good thing is just enough, there's plenty more, including a big plate of screamingly fresh spring rolls. I see we're getting another coat on the chicken. The paper will prevent the skin from being burned by the heat. So, Tony. Uh, thank you. Oh, now I understand why her honey chicken is so famous. Now, I want to make sure I'm eating the food according to local customs. He has his good reason for that. Five fingers? And then I ah, good. <laughs> so I can just get right in? Good. Tell her I'm very relieved. <laughs> the snakehead fish rolls are incredible. Pork and fish go together so fantastically. Oh, magnificent. I just uh, explained to her that food bring Tony to her, and she will go to Tony for food. The bridge. The bridge. Is a food. It's a full mind body experience. This. Oh yeah, here comes the good stuff. There are a few things in this world I like more than a good cup of coffee, and I happen to think that the best coffee in the world is made in Vietnam. So it shouldn't be a surprise that Madame Tiet has her own personal blend. This is the best of the best. You're climbing the Everest of coffee. This is the mountaintop. This is it. Oh mm -hmm. man, is that good? Ah, my friend Lin. Once again, he's done me right. Now, before I leave Vietnam, Lin suggests a snack. So we head to one of the main restaurant areas in Hanoi. As I understand it, it's sort of the Vietnamese version of a food court, meaning outside of the Tet Holiday, it's one long strip of food, 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 and operators and hawkers all the way down. And what kind of restaurant are we looking for? We go to the restaurant where we they can enjoy the chicken that is cooked in the Chinese herb. Ah, chicken and Chinese herb. Sounds good. Tai Hong Lao is just one of the many small restaurants that line this road. This is it. Nothing fancy, but it has a specialty and sticks to it. This is the oldest shop of this kind of chicken in this street. So it's a chicken boiled in uh, Chinese herb broth here? Yeah, this is. Now this is fast food. Chicken in a bowl, topped with a healthy broth, two steps, and it's at your table. Good, good, good. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I like fried bread. What better to sop up all that soup but some fried baguette? All right, bon appetit. Oh, it's delicious. Where's that soup? It has the same sort of um, aromatic flavor. Good for sleeping. Oh, for sleeping. Well, it has been a long trip. I suppose I could use a nap. But Lynn knows as well as I do, there's no sleep for the hungry. So Lynn, that was yet another outstanding meal. You know all the good places in this town. <laughs> I hope I made you enjoy. And, and, and what is it with Hanoi? I mean, it's everywhere. It's just food, 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 good food everywhere. The people in Hanoi are the best person for eating. Yeah, you were born here, you have to say that, though. But I'm beginning, I'm, I'm coming to agree with you, I, got, I gotta say. It's a little frustrating, I mean, I'm only here about a week. I wanna eat everywhere, but I can't do it. Just this street, it'll take me one month just to eat on this street. Yeah. That's driving me crazy here. I mean, everywhere you look, there's cool looking stuff. So what have I missed? Everything, right? I got, I got, we don't a lot. miss anything. Uh, <laughs> Good, the right answer.
As the streets fill up again in Hanoi, Lin takes particular delight in bringing me to an out-of-the-way discovery of his. You must investigate, he likes to say, when talking about finding the good stuff. Where are you bringing me now, Lin? In a small alley inside of uh, downtown in Hanoi. The inn shop. Yeah. Eels? Yeah. All right. I like eel. So that's the name of this place, right? The eel shop. No messing about there. We know what we're going to be eating. But it's not like you don't have choices. Eel with banana leaf, eel and mushroom, a big bowl of eel soup, and stir-fried chili eel. Let's have what you eat when you're here. You're the regular. Okay. The best to me yeah. is the eel that is cooked in the bamboo. You want a particular dish, you go to a place that specializes in that dish. You don't go to some place with a gigantic menu with 22 different types of things. I mean, they call it the eel shop, and it does a lot of business. It's a pretty good bet that they do eel pretty well. They have very nice kind of salad. Yeah, I like a salad now. Salad, we know. This is Vietnam, so I expect a few differences. So that's banana flour, and these little green guys, they look good. In Vietnamese, we call it hung, hung vegetable. The salad also has pickles, sprouts, and a spicy dipping sauce. Oh, that's really good. It is really crunchy, delicious. Tastes good for me. But he liked this kind of salad. Mm. Well, enough rabbit food. Bring on the eel. Take your raw eel, a little sugar, and a nice wad of garlic. Slide it into the bamboo and cap with Vietnamese herb. Place over hot coals. Sit back and let those babies roast. The bamboo not only flavors the eel, but also functions as a serving dish. Oh, damn, that looks really good. Oh, yeah, that's some good eel. Man, that's tasty. I see why you come here. I could get hooked on this. It's quite sweet. It's good because it's caramelized. You got that nice charcoaly caramelization flavor. The best part of the eel mm -hmm. should be the body, not the head or the tail. You got a whole bunch of them in here. Delicious. Yeah, I got a real thing for this stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's some good eel. Yeah, this is fantastic. I appreciate this, Lynn. You take me to all the best places. You really do. This is really great. It's a neighborhood joint with a neighborhood around it. You're not eating in isolation. You're eating in, in a context of a community. That feels, I don't know, that feels really good to me. I like that. You've seen it. Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you see why I love it here? <laughs>